you hear that? Is it supposed to sound like this? It's Mr. Deity. I think it sounds great. family we are up and we are live we are coming to you live from the shisha lounge um one of which is one of my sponsors that you know what i'm saying they, I'm, I'm, I'm i'm up here you know what i'm saying we're doing the show live and i've been blessed because brother shaka called in early so i was able to play his song which of course we could fit into the story because we're telling stories tonight family we gonna we gonna tell the stories tonight. It's folk tale for grown folks. So first, I wanna welcome you to Giami Journey Radio. I love the call of the Phoenix. That's the call of the Phoenix. You know, of course, you know we are you listening to folk tales for grown folks, and this is a heart of a symbol production. So when you get the Phoenix and you get a symbol to combine, what you do is you get a beam. Like us, that's here to shatter your old paradigm. I'm sorry for the feedback for those of you that's listening to me on uh, Spreaker. You know what I'm saying? For those that just want to catch the show, you don't necessarily want to see the visuals. You go to uh, giamijourney.com and on the timeline for the next, well, at least for the next day, you're going to be able to cast this show. You're going to be able to download this show, family. Download it. Like it. Share it. You know what I'm saying? Because the conversation that we're having is, 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 is important for us as far as nation building. Right? Now, before I get into the folk tale of the day, which is the dogs and the fox. Right? 
I want to share something with you that bothered me as I'm riding. Well, first off, on my way down to the uh, Shisha Lounge, an old song that kind of moved me uh, came on, and it kind of it kind of played into the the theme of a lot of our our, our, our lives right now. You know, those of us that's old enough to remember old hip hop. You know, it was a, it was a group from Cleveland, which Shock is from, called. Uh, what was those rappers from Cleveland? Shaka, uh, I can't remember the name of the Talk about Bone? Bone Thugs and Harmony. For the love of money, right? And and many of us, we have been right. educated to love money more than we love each other. To love money above everything. Place money above everything. But money should never go above honor, loyalty, and sacrifice. Money should never go above family. Money should never go above the tribe. As a matter of fact, money is is low on the totem pole. Now I know a lot of y'all find that hard to understand, right? And that's cool. I'm not I'm not mad. I'm not you know what I'm saying I'm not I'm not I'm not I'm not picking bones about that because you have been taught that. Right? But money is not what makes the world go round, family. You know what I'm saying? It's us working together that makes the world go round. It's us building that makes the world go round. And by us getting caught up in the illusion that it's money, see, because once we start focusing on the money, then anything goes. Loyalty goes out the window. Window. Honor goes out the window. Sacrifice goes out the window. If you don't have honor, loyalty, and sacrifice, you can't build. You know what I'm saying? If it's just about you, you can't build, right? So now, the, the piece that, that, and another piece as I was riding today, you know what I'm saying? Because y'all know that I be complaining about the radio. I can't listen to the radio with my kids because some of that shit that be coming on is just, you know what I'm saying, a little bit mature for them, right? So I have to listen to NPR. On NPR today, they had something, an uh, article that was published in the Washington Post. And, it's, and, and, and I guess the post was so popular at the point in time that it went all over the world, all over the country. And they're talking about the wealth inequality gap in America. And it's just a few things that I, uh, I want to go through on this real quick. Um, man, all right, let's look at this. Wealth inequality in the United States is the unequal distribution of assets amongst the residents of the United States. Wealth includes the value of homes, automobiles, personal valuables, business savings and investments. The net worth of the U.S. households and nonprofit organizations was $94.7 trillion in the first quarter of 2017, a recorded level both in nominal terms and purchasing power parity. Divided equally among the 124 million U.S. households, this would be $760,000 per family. However, the bottom 50% of the families, <laughs> representing 62 million households, averages 11,000 net worth. Now, I've been, I've been sharing some quotes with y'all that says that the average, the median income of the black household is $1,700. Subtracting a car. We have a real problem, family. We have a real problem. There is a wealth disparity. I know y'all like, brother, I tell you, just got done talking about how money is not the key, right? But once we start working as a community, we need a medium of trade, and that's what rep, that's what money is. What is the medium of trade that we have flowing in our community? At this point in time, all of the wealth is being extracted from our community, right? And they say that the top eight people, six of which live in the United States, have more money than, hold on, they have more money than the bottom 50% of America. Matter of fact, the, the, the top eight people on the income bracket got more money than half of humanity. If there's seven billion people on this planet, that means that eight people have more money than, than 3.5 billion people combined. That's problematic. That's problematic. So we need to get into our folk tales. We need to get into our ancestors. We need to get into whatever the hell we need to get into so that we can start doing some major building because what concerns me about that is if only eight people control that much wealth, what that means is we have 
fiefdoms. <laughs> fiefdoms that we all exist up under. And these top eight motherfuckers can determine the directions of many people's lives. So family, we got to try up. We got to start getting our weight up. We got to start getting our wealth up. We got to start getting our, 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 our minds and our collective power together so that we can start making some effective moves. Because it's a, it's a terrible thing when a few people can decide the destiny of many. And that's just been going on too long in our community. Now, other people are starting to feel it. But in our community, that has always been a major factor. A few people decide on what the fuck you could do with your life. And what's more important, and if it don't affect you and you satisfy with how you live, I want you to think about this. How are these eight people in their progeny, their children, decide on how your children should live? That should never be any other group's decision. That should be our decision. And, and, and I guess we kind of chose by becoming consumers, by giving up um, um, the pursuit of, of nation building, by giving up the pursuit of justice, by giving up the pursuit of politics, by giving up the pursuit of, 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 of creating our own reality. And, and saying, hey, we're going to fit in and America is fair and we're living in a post-racial society by us surrendering. We have turned the fate of our children over to a small number of people. And I don't know how you feel about that, but I'm fucked up by that. I'm upset about that. I'm mad about that. And I'm calling my ancestors. I'm calling my ancestors up to deal with that. And more importantly, I'm calling those of us that's in the moment right now to start doing something so that we can affect the future of our children. Man. This shit bothers me. And if it don't bother you, I got to really wonder what the fuck is going on. And, 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 and I want a lot of y'all to understand, right? Because what they're talking about when they talk about the wealth, right? Many of us y'all is talking about, well, you know, I got I got money in the walls. I got money up under the mattress. I got money. They can't count that money. And you can't count that money because as soon as you put it into the economy, the federal government is coming to get their cut. Family, you can't hide it, you know, so the actual wealth that you have is is determined by how much money you got legally flowing within the system. And a lot of y'all don't understand that because you can't, you could pass on money out the wall. But what happens if one of your child spends one dollar over the amount? And they keep reducing the amount that a motherfucker could spend in a single purchase. So now, I'm going to take it off of that, right? I'm going to take it off of that. And we're going to get into this folk tale. Me and Shaka are going to chop it up real quick. Because, you know, it's a, it's a, a, um, a um, Kuji Chagalia night. And I want to make sure that... Uh, we make sure we hit this folk tale for the night because it is called folk tales for grown folks. So if you have any children listening, I'm warning you in advance. Please send them to bed because we're gonna get harsh, we're gonna get raw, and most importantly, we're gonna keep it real. We're gonna draw on the power of the wisdom of our ancestors, and we're gonna draw on the power of now so that we can project our thoughts and our ideas and our but actions I into the future. like sharing tonight, man. You say who? Go ahead, share. I, 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 I don't know how to introduce this. I'm going to just say it. We'll because say it. you always tell me, you know, brother, just jump in. Just jump in. Now, I, I want to bring a different layer to the conversation as we're talking about wealth, as we're talking about greed, as we're talking about selfishness and selflessness. There's, a, uh, there's something that I wrote, a very short uh a very short story, and I wanted to share it sometime tonight, but I didn't want to just insert and go ahead and, and do that. But I just want you to know I got a, I got a small story to share, just to bring a little bit uh, a little bit more context. This is folk tale for grown folks. Now, if your story overtakes the folk tale for the night, that's cool because this is a current folk tale. Now, I want you to be careful because I am a folk tale stealer, my friend. So, I want to make sure that you understand that the story is good by the, by the third presentation of this show from now, that will be my story. But go ahead, share it if you dare. <laughs> Alright, well... But, hey, hey, but keep track of... of, keep, keep, of keep, well, hold on, keep track of this show. 
so that you always can refer back and be like, that's my story. Go ahead. Yeah, I got you. Now, here's what it is. 13 years ago, I was put in a situation where everything that I wrote had to be meaningful and had to be something that I could that they can learn from. And um, I started writing a stage production called The Evolution of the Elevated People. Right? right? Where in this story, eventually, it does lead to a point in our existence where we uh, establish uh, ability. Those of us who have followed in trials of self mastery are able to harness uh, how. So that's majorly what the evolution of the elevated people is, people with spiritual gifts who are here to bring balance back to humanity. Now, recently, recently I wrote a, uh, a, a more um, engaging story that's a part of the evolution of the elevated people, but it is entitled Empire Underground. But it entails is a bi coastal artist society. Like those, uh, you ever seen in the movie Kids, where you just see the culture from like a uh, being a, a, a you know from a bird's view or whatnot. You see and you hear into the different conversations. Well, that's how this takes place. From from California, you hear a lot of the uh, musicians and the uh, street performers talk amongst each other, and graffiti artists talk amongst each other. Uh, in, in the, uh, you know, on the beach. And then here in Cleveland and in Columbus, you hear people from the hip hop scene, you hear people from the jazz club, and it, you know, kind of finds you with a Mo Better Blues. You see Eddie and Perez, and you see this artist of society doing what we do in the Midwest. What happens throughout the course of the exchanges is that they're all talking about um, YouTube videos have gone viral about people, and this is this the eclipse. People are starting to just like the show heroes, and and this story because it's sci-fi. I tell, uh, I, like you, hot Tim, I borrow from other tales so I don't have to explain so much. So that's the part that is that resonates from heroes. They start to find us like in heroes. But in this story, he, their spiritual gift, and they have to do right with their power, right? Mm -hmm. Now, and what happens is that it's so much hype that these videos are going viral. Did you see that kid levitating? Oh man, that's got two million views. That's got to be real. And that's people's reality. It's like, yo, did you see that one kid when he put his hand out and made the one lady go up in the air like that? Yo, that's got to be real, son. Look, three million views, you know what I'm saying? I can't, man, you can't. Look, look, that, yo, yo, he on something, son. He on the something. Yeah, so that's what's going on all around the world. Man, it's just hype until one day in Columbus, Ohio, bank downtown and when they look at the video it's kids with superpowers putting their hands up and causing people to they're just puppeteering people i would like on some flash mob stuff just putting their hands in the air and freezing and letting them take their money out of their hand and and hypnotizing this woman to go open up the vault and walk up walk the money out to the van how did they do that? Kids got some kind of powers, right? Mm -hmm. and, and over the course of two weeks, it's happening from LA, Cleveland, to Columbus. It's happening everywhere to the point where this nation believes that people with super abilities are taking over state of commerce in America. There's billions of dollars hundreds of billions of dollars is being taken from the banks, right? Right. And nobody knows how, you know, how to fight these people with superpowers. Here's the whole twist. No one has superpowers. You 
find out when one of the actors that's a friend of mine in Cleveland is teaching his class down at the community college, and then you like get a pan of his his class, and it's the bank teller, it's the security guard, it's the artist society who created this hype to be able to get enough money by the influence to build territory to the place in the world where America doesn't even see um, any equity. And that's under, underground. That's where the empire underground is made. There's so many people that above ground without, with, without birth records. That's, that's been intended throughout all of this time. Now these are the ones, the artists who are coming out, that's the indigo children who have been uh, who have been protected and maintained in a space that's totally away from the direction. These are the ones with the ability. I'm gonna just stop right there. I'm gonna put up there. We could be found. But also, we got dropped off of there too, so it's crazy. So, you know, it's cool. Um, G Y E N Y A M E, because I'm going to give you a story that coincides with what you're talking about. See, because it's not even necessarily about people having superpowers, because one of the things that we have seen historically is that when you set up models for the children, and you break records for the children, and you do things in front of the children, and children see it, the children don't know better, so they go out and they try to emulate and do what they saw done. Now, in European history, you have this dude called Alexander, the Macedonian. A lot of people call him Greek, but he was Macedonian. His daddy was Macedonian, and they, they ran their, their whole piece on the whole piece of the patriarchy. His father was Macedonian. Now, what Philip Philip the Macedonian did was he made sure that his son had the best education. And th at that time, for that part of the world, it was out of Greece. So he hooked his son up with Greek philosophers who told him about the world and told him about the feats of Hercules and the feats of Achilles. And he listened to them. And as impossible as everybody thought it was to move beyond where Greek, Greek society was, where the Macedonians was, he listened to those stories and he moved out and start conquering the world. They, Shaka, you still there? We even got dropped on, um, that's incredible. That's incredible to me. I, so they dropped Shaka on, right? And it's cool because I'm going to refire that up. That's nothing but a thing. I'm going to refire it up and call my brother back. It's nothing, right? So, um, the piece is that our children listen to the stories that we tell and they start to make them reality. Another example that a lot of people in our age bracket can understand. Is the star? Oh God! Here we go with that bullshit. All right, I know how to. I know how to fix this. I know how to fix this. I don't have to log in. I'm gonna do it another way. So we having some technical difficulties, and it just so happened at the same time we started um, uh, doing the show, we got a bunch of people in the background. So it's crowded up here in the Shisha Lounge. If you want to come out, come out and join the conversation. Come out. I got hookah. I got a little bit of extra change coming. I'll get you a hookah. Come sit down and smoke with me. Let's start the conversation because we got to start talking about some of this stuff. Now, when we tell our children the stories, our children strive to make the story reality. And we got to remember this, family. We got to remember this because our children, our children were not taught about the same limits that we were taught about. Now, a prime example for call back into my own conference call. Joining conference now. I'm sorry, Shaka. This call is being recorded. They, they, dropped, they dropped it. They dropped us on Facebook. They dropped us on, um, on all this. They dropped us on a lot of this stuff. Now, going back to what you're saying, 
A prime example is, do, do you remember, do you remember Mike Tyson? Those out there, do y'all remember Mike Tyson? Do you remember how unbeatable Mike Tyson appeared to be? Once somebody yeah. was able to go out and beat Mike Tyson, after somebody was able to frame a story in their mind where they had no choice but to beat Mike Tyson, the whole attitude towards Mike Tyson changed. So the fear that individuals had going into the ring to face Mike Tyson had been dropped because somebody had shown that it was possible. We saw the same thing with the four minute mile. When one motherfucker showed the world that he could break the four minute mile, everybody, I ain't gonna say everybody, but everybody that was serious in track started breaking the four minute mile. But we got to understand the goals and shit that we set for our children, the stories that we tell our children, the things, the incredible things that we do before our children, our children will take it to the next level because that's how we've been designed as a people. Now, as long as they see poverty and they see that we satisfied in poverty, as long as they're hearing the stories and they believe that they are coming up in wealth, as long as they believe the illusions that's being put out there and we're not challenging the illusions and telling them there's something more that we could create a reality, our children will constantly be stuck. And I'm here to tell y'all family, we got to start re-looking at our stories. We got to be start re-looking at our families and we got to start changing the stories so that we can start telling our children empowering things, challenging them, you know what I'm saying, not, not, not lying to them, but giving them the hard truth and letting them know that it's possible. And once our children start seeing that it's possible, they're going to start moving on it. And when they start moving on it, we're going to start changing the world, period, period. So Shaka shared one of his stories, and I'm, gonna, I'm put, I'm it's saying, happening. huh? We saw it with hip hop. Hip hop was go impossible. Go ahead. I just let you know I'm back. I know. Hip hop is hip hop was impossible for for individuals to be making the type of money that they're making from hip hop was impossible. But they did the shit, and we still doing the shit. And our kids are seeing it, and they seen that they see that that is the only way. But what we have to do. We have to expose them to the fact that just like Alexander, baby, you could do it. Just like. Just like Hannibal, right. you can do it. Hannibal was told a story. And the question we always got to ask is, what stories are we telling our children about their capabilities? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But go ahead, bro. Well, let me, I mean, you know, just bounce back off. Uh, how did you receive, how, how did you receive the story to that at all? The story that you told, the way I'm receiving it is that individuals start demonstrating so-called quote-unquote impossible things. And the more, once one person was able to show that he was able to, he or she was able to do it, other people started copying. Because they said, if he could do it, right. God damn it, I could do it. I'm going to do it. And they, and they were and, and because we have this thing called the internet, they were able to broadcast the impossible things that they were doing, which made it very possible for some of those people that's watching. You know what I'm saying? Nowadays, we got to understand, man, our children don't they don't they don't learn like we learn. It ain't quite up where the matrix was in a movie where you take a plug, something in the back of your head and you immediately learn. But Motherfuckers who are serious on this internet shit can pick up shit ten times, maybe even a hundred times faster than we was able to do. They're able to pick up on the history. They're able to pick up on the science. Right. They're able to pick up on all this stuff and share it. What's up? Oh my God! I got just was shared. Uh, hey. I just was joined by Quasi Low. Go and bring the chair over here because I know you got something to say. Bring your ass over here. Over here. Over here. <laughs> My, my, my little brother, Quasi Low, he ain't little <laughs> no more. He is now officially in the, in the International Man of Mystery and Leisure Club and shit. Because he done traveled. And we're going to talk a little bit about his travel. Hopefully we better get in this story. You know what I'm saying? Brother, well, go wait. Ahead. Well, go ahead. Okay. I want to have Tim 
that uh, Empire Underground is all not science fiction. However, see, there's another part, the next, the next story, steps into the science and fiction. Um, okay, well, I guess you could say if it, if it is science fiction, but for the most part, what it is, to go on viral, they were put patterns that caught the attention. They were, they were put out in such a way where people in real news centers are thinking, uh, I don't know if that's real to you. And they're having these conversations like, yo, do people really have superpowers right now? I, I mean, we're in the universe. Which is, you know, because spirit makes it impossible to argue that, you know, anything that, that, that we've been taught in, in, in the West. Do you understand? Right. We're, we're taught not to believe that they're aliens, you know, uh, those types. But, come on now. Real the piece is, is that all of those high healer people and some shits of people to stay age a real mob hype. So even the so-called uh, victims were that thing that was choreographed to make it look cause to grab this money and put it in the, under a spell or a trance. And they all move at once that each time the collective was getting paid billions of dollars. So what did they do with this? They bought a territory inside of a territory that's already owned by using its political influence because now we have that, we have money to be able to buy political influence, to be able to black uh, a, a hologram screen over the we actually reside in our sovereign self, now. in our empire underground because now because like i said man that once you start showing our people the impossible and they start seeing it and some of them start believing that they're gonna move out and try to do it sleep build atlantis right you know what i'm saying you start talking about not just talking about it but now because what we got to get beyond is we got to get beyond just in a sense talking about it. we got to start showing it like for example when i went to the sundance in south dakota I saw an elder transform sand into water. I saw an elder call on shooting stars. I saw this myself, right? So I'm like, damn, there's something deeper going on in this world that we are not capable of. And I wanted more of my people to be able to experience this. Why? Because we have been, we have been confined to the box of the society. So they say it's impossible, so we start believing it's impossible, rather than doing the research and doing the work and doing the searching to find it, because at one point in time, flying was impossible. At one point in time, for us to talk, for you to be in Cleveland and for me to be sitting here in Columbus was impossible for us to talk. You know what I'm saying? But what we're doing right now, we're doing the yeah. impossible. Ten years ago, this was impossible. Now I got three people online. I got mm -hmm. Brother Quasi. Brother, Brother Quasi probably saw my text that I sent out, and he showed up. You know what I'm saying? The piece is we are being limited by old ideas, right? This is why I do one show on the fables, and I do another show on, on Proverbs, because our ancestors crystallized this wisdom so that we can start looking at some of the impossible things and start asking questions. Many of us don't ask the questions no more. We don't ask the questions politically. We don't ask the questions economically. We don't ask the questions spiritually. We don't ask the questions mentally. We're not asking the questions. We're just taking it for granted that experts know everything. And they have explored everything. But the fact of the matter, when you look at the power of physics, right, and you start looking into quantum physics, and you start doing some research, and you start seeing the scientists are admitting that they only... They don't even know of 1% of the 
of everything that's going on in the universe. They don't even know how big the fucking universe is. They can't even explain what electricity is. But we're able to harness that power. Right? So we look at these powers. Hey, and that is, that is really, that is really the necessity. That is, that is the central. And I, I hear it the way that you're saying it, Hashem. It's just that if you take every science and every art, and you had, you had it labeled on an on sheet of paper, and you stack those pieces of paper up, and you got a, 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 a stack that's a foot high, right? All of these different subjects on each of these. So somebody might only be able to explain something scientifically, some, and somebody will take that same subject matter and explain it artistically or abstractly or based on modern, you know what I mean, based on whatever ism they come out of. But the piece is, is that unless we can stack that, that pile of paper up high and look through, look through the whole stack and see the truth that exists within each of them, we don't get it as a people. And that is, when I say exponential, I'm saying seeing it from all angles, experiencing it from all angles. And that's the part of life that most of us just don't get to, it's triangulating our thoughts even to our feelings, to what our, our spirit and what our ancestors are telling us and guiding us to do. You understand? So we blame it on the voices, or we blame it on the meds, or we retreat to the, uh, the, the drugs, or we retreat to the technology. And that's where, you know, we are, we are dependent. We are, are, are uh, and, and I feel like to a point where it's a sickness. We are pharmaceutically and technologically dependent. So when the lights go out, most of us will go crazy looking for our next fix, mm. whether it's from technology, whether it's from, you know, because if we don't know how to communicate without technology, how are we going to find each other in the dark? How are you, how you going to find me? You know what I mean? How am I going to find you? And those are the types of things where it's like, how we going to, yo, how we know who, you know, who our families is with in the dark. So that's a major, that's a major thing, just like that. That's, With these hurricanes happening, it oh, can happen man. today. Not only can it happen, we ain't, we ain't even hit winter yet. This is why I'm telling people you need to drive up. You need to really start, because right now, in a sense, we got a lot of shit going on. And people is just thinking like, you know, it's it's normal. But this shit is not normal. You know what I'm saying? When, when, when we have a thousand year storm um, every year. How the fuck do you have a thousand year storm every year? Somebody explain that shit to me. You know what I'm saying? Right. You know, break that shit down for me. You know what I'm saying? How you have a hundred year flood every year? What, you know what I'm saying? The math, nigga, the math don't add up. One plus one equals two, not one plus one equals a hundred. It don't, it don't make no goddamn sense. And what we have to start doing is asking the questions and, and be honest with our kids so our kids can start doing the research. Because I'm telling you right now, within our children right now is, is an intelligence that's just incredible. And it's just waiting to be ripped out. But, yo, Brother Quasey has something he want to say. Because I already know. I know what it looked like when he when he ready to say something. I ain't nah, seen him want. to ask something. Go ahead. What up, everybody? Who's on the line? Shaka's on the line right what now. Shaka? That's Shaka. What up, though? Where you at? What's going on, Quasey? That's Shaka. What's happening, brother? I'm in Cleveland. Yeah, yeah. I ain't seen you since the last time you was in Cleveland. Oh, bro. Yo. Yo. I remember the last time I saw you. I got it on, okay. on video tape, yo. Hey, but what was the conversation about? Like, what led the conversation? Well, like, I'm just, we, y'all, I'm just hearing we, all type of perspectives. We started on, on the folk tale. Okay, so, uh, so what Shaka did before I even read the, before, I didn't even read the folk tale yet. Shaka jumped in and started sharing his folk tale. You know what I'm saying? He he came up with his own story, which is very important because now we are the griots of this time and the stories that we shape the stories that we tell will once once again motivate people in our generation and motivate younger people to start moving beyond what we are right now we got to we got to tell different stories politically and economically so that our children can understand it. and we got to be able to deal with them and, and tell them on, on on a reality tip so right now of course the conversation is going to jump because that's what the fuck hot tim do you you know what i'm saying so 
you you want to add? Go ahead. What you want? Hey, to hey, Quasi. Yo. What, what's happening? Yo, I just wanted to like give give you the the commercial version of of the story because it was very short anyway. So I'm gonna just ask tell you. My story was a my story was live. First of all, okay. All right. First of all, I gotta get you hyped. Like when it come on TV and you see the lights and you like, oh, what it is is that there's a whole bunch of hype about these YouTube videos of people with superpowers, right? And it's going on all over the place. In Cleveland, they talking about it. In LA, they be talking about it. And then it's just like, yo, it's really just all hype because it's just you got people out there like, yo, this is real. Uh, ain't no way that little baby gonna fake this type of stuff. It's like, yo, but anyways, it's all hype until one day a bank get robbed in Columbus. And when they look at the tape, what no guns you it was kids using superpowers to basically get people to do what they will them to do. So these kids without even using words, it's like just commanding people to give them the money and you got people that were standing in line that's just like droned out, like on some thriller dance, all in synchronicity, out, right? And these type of heists are happening from the Midwest to the West Coast until it's like a hundred billion dollars missing. Now and I understand why you turn around and realize that the artist. Huh? Now I understand a little bit about got the where artist I from in. these. Keep going. So what it is really is that there was no nobody had superpowers. It was just all pretend. But you had artists like Danny artists and basically creating an illusion for the illusionist because we live in this illusion, right? But these artists are the vanguard to be able to build our own territory. So that's where the hundred billion goes into into building an empire that's underground or under the grid, where when they look from the satellite, it's blotted out a, uh, under a mask. So now we, the artists, have have made way for a real place we're hindered and we're off the grid, so they don't even know we exist. Most of the people that are born in this empire are born without birth records. So kids are are basically cultivated in a place where they're able to achieve their real mobility underground, away from the poisons and the frequencies that keep us away from that right now. So that's the abbreviated idea. I hope that the second time around. Hot Tim, you were you got a little bit more of uh of the gist. Nah, well, I was listening, but I got caught up in the matrix. You know what I'm saying? Because the, the 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 PC is one. My, no, really, dude. The, the, because I'm trying to make sure that we get uh, more people. Because you know the the issue is, I want to make sure that what we're talking about goes out. The conversation could be long. But I want to get as many yeah. people involved in the conversation as possible because I don't want people to 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 just let this pass by now. As, as if we're talking about just illusions and shit. We're talking about what's possible. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. now, we're living in a time where people are talking about epigenetics, where an individual can do incredible shit because of the people that they hang around, because of the environments that they create for themselves. We can create uh, communities of health. We can create co communities of miracles if we are willing to do the work. If we are willing to, you know what I'm saying? Because you don't just get no, I mean, because like you could talk about the superpowers being illusionary, but many of us have seen motherfuckers around us with superpowers. Some of the shit that some of these brothers be doing in the hood with these basketballs yeah. is superpowers. Some of the shit that these motherfuckers be doing against grown right. men with the football is motherfucking superpowers. Some of the shit that our kids start talking about and they have no knowledge of and are able to, to, to articulate ideas that are just incredible and beyond their age is a superpower. And what we have to start doing is start recognizing that shit, labeling that shit, and letting people know that this is not impossible. 
is just difficult, right? And once we start building on that, we go a little bit farther. But let's do this. Right. What, what we're going to do, so we can get Quasi up in here, we're going we're gonna, to, we're going to, I'm going to read the folktale for the day. The folktale for the day, because I ain't going to hold y'all hostage. We already, believe it or not, Shaka, we've been going 46 minutes, dog. You know what I'm saying? We caught up in a time vortex. Yeah. I, I try to keep the show below an hour, right? You know what I'm saying? Of course, we're going to, if, if the conversation get good, because some people don't start tuning in until right about now anyway. But the folktale goes like right. this. It's called The Dogs and the Fox. This is an Aesop fable. Um, translated by George Fowler Townsend. Brother Hatem, don't speak Latin. And I believe in letting other people do what they're good at. And I just do what I'm good at. So the story goes like this. Some dogs. Hold on. Let me make sure we on on everywhere. All right. We on. Some dogs finding the skin of a lion began to tear it in pieces with their teeth. A fox seeing them said, if this lion were alive, you would soon find out that his claws were stronger than your teeth. Now I'm going to read the story one more time and then I'm going to go into the, the moral of the story, at least the moral that comes out of here. If you hear something else you want to share, feel free to type it on the timeline. Um, Quasi, feel free to jump in. Shaka, feel free to jump, jump in. Here we go. Some dogs finding the skin of a lion began to tear, in piece, tear it into pieces with their teeth. A fox seeing them said, if this lion were alive, you would soon find out that his claws were stronger than your teeth. The moral is, it is easy to kick a man when he's down. Anybody want to take that one first? Cause you know I'm gonna tear that motherfucker up. I'm gonna tear it up because we could connect it. We could connect this shit historically. We could connect this shit, and now we could connect it in the future. Crystallized wisdom. I threw it right out there. Y'all ready? It has just been so many ideas. I really, I'm still kind of bugging off a shocker story. You know what I mean? Like, you know. Well, like, bug off it. I mean, I just wanted to share that. Go ahead. Um, just the idea of kids being the, you know, the face of the revolution or like being the, the spark plug or something to, to come and be something different. It's kind of on par with what I've been, it's been on my mind a lot. Just noticing about the importance of like teaching people right the first time. Like, because I find myself like now, my actions be slowed a lot because I be challenging a lot of my my thoughts from the past and trainings and you know what I mean different doctrines that I accepted over consciously and subconsciously you know what I mean I'm looking much crazy <laughs> but uh, oh you right. see it. <laughs> the camera moving slower than, slower than you. you you but um time warping brother as far as the the, the kick a man wise down if I look at who's the man down mm. It's, my, it's, it's my, my fellow man, you know what I'm saying? And the kicking ain't gonna stop, so I think, I don't know, like, my, my thought go a whole other place, like, wake the, wake the lion up. <laughs> the lion dead. Is he? The, in this story, the lion is dead. The wolves stumbled upon a lion's carcass. Right. And they are tearing the lion up, celebrate, rolling in the blood, like they killed this lion themselves, right? And they're celebrating, and the fox sitting on the side is looking at him, saying, if that lion was alive, he would show y'all that his claws was stronger than your teeth. Right? Now, family, I want y'all, Chaka, you want to you wanna hit this before I get it? Because I'm about to get it, family. You better jump in. Go ahead. Right. Go ahead. Family, I need y'all to understand. When we're looking at these folk tales, in Giami, one of the things I, I try to make sure people understand is to become symbol literate and there's certain steps that we go through so that you can start, one, memorizing, second, um, using your mind to dissect it and make it your own, third, using it and applying it from your heart, making it part of you. Family, you have to understand that we are the lion that's down. We are the lion that, 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 that somebody stumbled upon and was able to start tearing up. And the piece that we have to remember, as, as my man said, 
is that that lion is down, and as long as he's down, those dogs is going to be kicking. The lion's running pride, because the one thing I have to wonder is, where is the pride of this lion? Where is the female lion? Where are the other lions that this lion was rolling with that now that his carcass is right here, these dogs are able to tear this shit up? Right now, family, you know what I'm saying? Economically, in our communities, our carcass is being tore up by wolves. Right now, politically, family, we are being tore up. You know what I'm saying? Right now, family, the dogs are upon us spiritually. Right now, family, the dogs are upon us in this education system. Right now, family, you know what I'm saying? And the question is, are we going to stand around and watch them tear the carcass of our brothers? Watch them tear the carcass of our mothers? Watch them tear the carcass of our grandparents? And reap the benefits and roll in the blood like they conquered this shit? You know what I'm saying? We got generations of unconquered people. Generations of unconquered motherfuckers striving. You know what I'm saying? Trying to fit in with the wolves. Not realizing that we're motherfucking lions. Not realizing it. And because we don't realize we lions, we just watch as the wolves rebel in tearing us to fucking shreds. How in the fuck can we allow somebody to come in our community and open up stores? How the fuck can you allow somebody to run the politics in your community? How the fuck? We got cities where we are the majority. Detroit, how the fuck can somebody that don't look like you, that don't have your interests at heart, come into Detroit and run that shit? You know what I'm saying? Then on top of that, then on top of that, right? Because we got this wise fox, this this trickster sitting on the side, looking, and 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 and, and, and is able to break down the analysis that the other lions probably standing around watching this motherfucker get tore up. They can't do it. They can't do it because they're confused. You have been taught as a lion that you are a motherfucking wolf. You have been taught, my fault, that you're a dog. And you're acting like dogs, we are being tore to pieces. When a lion starts acting like a lion, that's the only way the lion gets respect. Now, family, oh, I got the hookah back. Family, when we read, when we look at these stories, we gotta break them down. First off, we gotta identify the characters. The characters in this story is the fox, the dogs, the dead lion. The question that you have to answer for yourself is, in your life right now, which one of those are you? Are you the fox sitting on the side making a comment? Are you the dog tearing up the lion? Or are you the carcass of the lion laying on the ground? When you are clear where you are in the story, then you can start adding to it. You can start changing it. You can start changing the effects that this story may be having on your life. Because for some of y'all, this is the story of your life. Somebody's tearing your shit up. And this is the question. I just read to y'all that eight people in the world right now got more money, more resources, more access than half of humanity. That's 3.5 billion people that got less influence than eight motherfuckers on this planet. Eight wolves that's tearing up your motherfucking carcass. Now, are you going to sit there and continue watching them? Rebel off because I want y'all to understand this the carcass of the lion for, for us as, 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 as Africans, as captives in America, as, as individuals who came through what they like to call that slave trade and shit, dog. The carcass of the lion is not necessarily oh. you, it's your ancestors. These motherfuckers is rolling in the blood of your Hey, ancestors. Hot Tim, let me ask you something, man. Go ahead. Go ahead. And this, uh, let me ask you something. This is just an honest little situation. Look. These guys, yeah, eight eight people with all this money. But if if you you, you live in like though uh, from a pot so it's now how much does that real work? Oh. Say it again. Did you upset it? Say it again, because it, it broke up. Yeah, I can't hear you. You still there? I, but, but these families, rather, these eight families with all this money. Can you hear me? Yeah, I hear you, dog. Can you hear me? You tell them. Right, yeah, 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 yeah. Go, go, go. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Hold on here. All right, yeah. 
So these people with all this money, my, my, my whole point is, is that if you build your, your own and you live in like Mark, um, a person, if you on your own island. Yeah, I can't really hear what you're saying. I can't get the concept of what you're saying. I'm, I'm thinking about, my bad, I'm going to have to go in another direction because I don't even know what direction you was going in. But before I came in here, I was obviously looking at Facebook because I like, like you know, Brother Tim said, I seen, I seen that he was going to be up here. So I said, you know, let me go ahead and, let me, let me go ahead and step out. I ain't been live in front of you people, you know, beautiful people out there listening, commenting, all of that. I ain't did this in a minute, man. It's nice, you know. But, um, but I definitely have been watching, though, and listening and paying attention and doing my research. Some of it be on Facebook, some of it be on, on Google, some of it be in a book, some of it be talking to people. I was on Facebook, I, like I said, I'm getting sidetracked. And somebody said something about who uh, Netflix and chill, what y'all watching, where you at, and where, this and that. And people was just commenting what they was watching, and I'm like, you know, I don't want to sound like a hater, because you watch what you watch, entertain yourself, but nobody said the news. And that's all I ever really watch today. As in, like, every other of the last days, recently has been a pretty big news day like every other day at least is probably a big news day and today it's significant like on the weather tip we got a 7.1 earthquake in mexico in mexico y'all heard that y'all heard it here go ahead and then you got a hurricane another hurricane level five close. it basically did an x just like the x that was the, the little 2024 we got another solar eclipse coming that's gonna make an x of the united states these little hurricanes made a lucky little x over the caribbean you know, and this is just a lot of shit. But North Korea is obviously the biggest thing going on because the more I look at it, the more I, I see that the, uh, the United States interest seems to benefit from war however they want to. North Korea doesn't benefit from war at all. You know, um, and, and they testing their shit. They doing the best. And I even looked around on a map. Like, you answer a lot of questions on your own if you just look at a map. Because they say North Korea is firing missiles over Japan. If they fire a missile in any other direction, it's going to hit some shit. It's going to land in Asia. Or it's going to land in Africa. Or you know what I mean? That's a smaller little area to try to land in that ocean. The Pacific Ocean is big as fuck. And getting over Japan really ain't that big of a deal. And they know this. They know it's provocative. But they also got to do what they got to do to survive. You know what I'm saying? Man, I don't know if I said this analogy before. But if a motherfucker is posted up outside of your house every day same day every year with guns and shit posted at your house talking about oh we ain't tripping we just doing this just because we want to practice just in case what the fuck you mean just in case so i'm not supposed to practice my defense plan that's just my thoughts like you know what i'm saying and i think if we were smart we would be practicing the defense plan cause because they practicing you know what i mean just because like they, they basically what they're saying is practice is not a threat you know what i'm saying so practice motherfucker like if the lights go out, like, I, I, I heard you say, you said when the lights go out, like, I still, I don't know, I find myself wanting to say if, you know what I mean, I've been on that tip, like, at this point, I'm like, fuck it, I'm just living, because I, I did my bug out for 2012, and it was a couple after that, I did my flip out, so fuck it, what's to come is to come, you know what I'm saying, but a plan, and a level head, hey, a level wait. head first, and a plan second, what's up? You can't, you can't really formulate. Yo, you it's this show, you man, and call. Can you hear me? Yeah. Go ahead. Oh, man. I was going to say, it's this show. Check out call. It's only two seasons. It's, it's, it's tight, man. It's What's kinda, it called? What's it called? Kind of get on the spike. You breaking up. What's it called? Say it a couple times just so we can hear what it's called. To keep a safe apply now, right? That's what I really come to understand. It's just about communicating and being real and getting to the deeper roots of yourself and like challenging shit. Like you know what I'm saying? Like pushing yourself because like life is hard. Like like people be talking about going outside of the United States, how hard it is. It's it's more real. You know what I'm like 
we ain't got all of these illusions and distractions. America, I have honestly though come to the conclusion that right now what we experience is some great shit. This ain't it. It's See, fucking great. And you got to travel internationally to really, really understand the fact. Because at one point in time, I was talking about moving to Ghana. Now, if I move, if I move outside of America, you best to understand that I'm coming back and forth. Because the peace is, family. We have invested in this motherfucker. We got blood in this motherfucker. When it comes down to it, you are the real American. You know what I'm saying? We, these motherfuckers, I'm not, I'm not even leaving when they cut the motherfucking check. Because they're going to cut the check. Y'all just have to be prepared for it. Now, this is the issue. We have to drive up just in case some shit does happen so that I know where I can find him. I know how to get up there and get your family. I know how I got a, we got a central place where we can locate. We got tents just in case we have to do that. We can survive in the wintertime. Hell, we can travel south. And we got a, we got a click of motherfuckers that can protect what we have. Because what's going to happen is that if shit goes off, motherfuckers is not going to have access to resources. And what the first thing they're going to be trying to do is take from those that are weaker. That's that's the way yeah. that's the way of nature. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Either either you predator or you prey. Now black folks, you got to ask yourself this. Are you predator or are you prey? Right now we that wolf caucus laying on the ground with the wolves rolling over in us in good times. So what the fuck you think the wolves gonna do in bad times? And this is an anomaly, like anything that's the greatest, like Michael Jordan is the greatest. You know, and his time has passed. I mean, they arguing if it's another greatest. Just like Babylon was the greatest. Fucking Rome was the greatest. That shit passed. Like, this shit is going to pass. Right. It, it might it might pass. It might pass 200 years from now. You know what I mean? Like, I'm done worrying about if that shit's coming right now or not. Like, move forward and make the changes. Like, be the person that you need to be that's the best me. That shit hard, man. That shit hard. Yeah. And you but, know what I mean? But that's... That's, that, that's it. We have to make sure. And then, what you're saying, we got to make sure we're saying to the young people so that they can start becoming the best that they can be, embracing the blessing that they have here. Because I know a lot of us, we think we're going through hell, but a lot of people that's talking this shit have never internationally traveled. Family, listen, I lost my passport in Ghana. Somebody stole my passport in Ghana, right? And I was in Ghana for 12 hours without no money. Now, let me explain this shit to you. I became American, I became more American than I have ever been in my motherfucking life. I walked up to the motherfucking embassy, it was a line of motherfuckers and they all looked like me. I opened my mouth and they knew I was American. The armed guards moved out the motherfucking way and, and parted like the Red Sea and let me through the motherfucking gates like it wasn't shit. You know what I'm saying? I went up there, I got what the fuck I needed, and I came back and I kicked it in Ghana for the next two weeks. You understand what I'm saying? Family, we have to understand where we are and the blessings that we have. Yeah, I was in, man, Brazil, man, I was in a favela, man, like, and it was, it's fun. For those that don't know, that's the hood. Like, that's, like, this ain't the hood. This that's ain't the, the that's hood. That's the hood. And I was in the most gentrified favela. I was in the safe favela, and you'll get your ass oh, disappeared dog. by the police. Them motherfuckers rode up. They was looking for somebody coming through. They got, they carry big guns. They don't carry, they, pistols. they got them. pistols too. Right, but they ain't pulling them motherfuckers. They ride around out. with their shit hanging out the side of the car, out the window. Like, that shit crazy. And the reason they, that they doing that is because the motherfuckers that are running the favelas are armed like that too. Drug dealers. Let me They're not talk like too much because them motherfuckers are probably somewhere in the bushes. But nah, for real, look. <laughs> They was looking for somebody though. Like this is just one little tidbit, just off of what he said. You know what I mean? Off of the the, the power of being American. I learned a couple words. I said passaporte, and I said I got a passport. I'm American. They didn't point their guns anywhere in my vicinity. Y'all listening to this? See, family, because what y'all got to understand is what we have to understand is family. Although we can trace our roots back to Africa, we have a vested interest here. And until we get the respect that we need here, it don't matter where we move. Understand that. Now, you're going to be protected as America, but how much power would you have to 
your black skin will have if your ass was to travel as a successful American, not representing your interests, not representing your empire, but representing the shit that we built as a community here. Well, the motherfuckers not only had to worry about the United States government coming looking for your ass, but for some of your relatives. It'd be like, my cousin was here, fuck the law. If he does not show up in the next 12 hours, I will melt this whole motherfucking town. See, that's what it's about, family. See, we thinking, you know what I'm saying, because I know a, I know a lot of us is caught up in, in the whole peaceful movement. I'm about peace and I'm about love, but I'm also about reality, right? That's why I teach my brothers to drill, right? That's why I teach my brothers um, 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 basic martial arts. That's why we go out to the woods and we practice living without anything, you know what I'm saying, but the food that we brought out and sitting around fires and talking. Why? Because we have to prepare just in case, and we have to build something, family. You know what I'm saying? We go like, like for example, man. A lot of y'all talking about going to to other countries and living, and you worth seventeen hundred dollars here, seventeen hundred dollars spend fast everywhere. Hey, seventeen hundred dollars in Brazil gets you a little. I mean, you could live fairly decent, but it cost you about three thousand to get there. But not only that, but seventeen hundred. How long would it last you in Brazil? It ain't gonna last that long. But Shit. ten thousand, ten thousand. You could live, you could live for six months in Brazil with ten thousand American dollars and live like a king. You know what I'm saying? You can make ten thousand dollars in six months in America. Hmm. People, what are you thinking? Six months in America, six months in Brazil, six months in America, six months in Ghana, six months in America. You know what I'm saying? It's a lot of places where you would receive, be received very well. And you work hard anyways, I hope. I know you work hard anyways, so it's oh, yeah. options, man, you know. It's, it's a pool. I mean, you know what I'm saying? We can kind of look at the statistics. I don't do the, the statistics. I'm into the magic shit, you know what I'm saying? It's other shows. You go to uh, Yvette Cornell. You go to the Funky Academic. You go to uh, Voice Watkins. You go to Tone Talks. They're going to give you the statistics. You know what I'm saying? You can listen to the statistics. But family, family, what I'm saying is we have to come together. And we got to start using our ancestral wisdom to start understanding that wealth, wealth, is not an individual thing. Wealth is a community thing. You could be a rich nigga. Don't get me wrong. But if your community is not rich, you have no protection for your money. Somebody could take your shit without any issue. But if your money is funding a whole bunch of motherfuckers up under you and you got a community and y'all building together, it don't matter where you go. It don't matter where you go. You're going to be all right. But you know what I'm saying? I'm always going to come back here because this is... Uh, I got blood here. Y'all see me pour from my ancestors every day on this side of the sea, right? Because we have generations and generations of wealth and blood and suffering right here, right here. And we're not taking advantage of what we have. We're not taking advantage of the amount of people we have. We're not taking advantage of the fact that a lot of us live in closed areas. We're not taking advantage of that. We're not governing ourselves. What does governing mean? That means guiding. We're not guiding the ship of the people. Family? And the ship is being guided right under us, man. Like, oh, man. Just watching how neighborhoods change, is, it's disgusting to me, man. Like We've been giving them away. That shit is disgusting to me, man. I'm really disgusted at what's happening in, in the east side of Columbus. It's, it's fucking... Shit, look at them short north. I mean, but the short north, north, I didn't grow. I grew up. On Long Street. Okay, so you know what I'm saying. Yeah. So like, bye bye I do, Street, I do understand. Gone. I mean, yeah, hell yeah. What happened to the short north? Because I lost a lot of friends to the pen and to the you know to the grave. You know, uh, through, through what happened in the short north. But I didn't necessarily grow up walking down those streets like I did on Long Street. You know, so it's it's, it's a lot. It's personal in a different way. You know. Uh, it's both fucking devastating, and it's both either where you are. If you grew up in either of those parts of town, man, I, I hope that shit disgusts you. And, you know, it gives you an opportunity. It gives you an opportunity to look at what's going on in the world in a greater context, man. Like, like that's the only type of shit I think about, for real. You know what I mean? But with that being said, I'm still a you man. You know what I'm saying? I'm still a man, and I still deal with the, man, the is issues of the flesh. You know what I'm saying? But my mind is always focused on one thing. It always has been. You know what I mean? Not just. You know, and, and you're talking to brothers, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm realizing the, the importance of, of telling telling my story and, and just, I done fucked up a lot, you know what I'm saying? But just 
still getting getting out. Me, I just ran into uh, you remember uh, Dominique, uh, mm -hmm. Dom, you know Dominique and, and uh, Robert and who else was in the little crew? You know Young Dominique, Lord? yeah. Right. Right. I just ran into him today. He said he been going to a lot of funerals and shit. You know what I'm saying? Right. I was, you know, we plan to see, so a lot, of, a lot of those brothers, a lot of brothers and sisters are going to be coming back because as, as, because family, check this out, statistically, <laughs> statistically, black folks in America were doing, was doing better in 2000 than we are doing now. Did y'all hear what I said? It's supposed to be forward ever, backwards, never. Family, we moving backwards economically. We moving backwards politically. You and that's, 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 that's just, you may have further evidence. But this political shit, man, it's, this political shit is orchestrated. I do think that if we was organized enough and unified enough that we can make noise politically, we can make noise militarily, we can make noise spiritually, but it's just all about the unity piece, man. But, like, being informed is so important. The information to bring, information and the, 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 the process of using that information, right? Because we've been lied to. Knowledge is not power. The, the application of knowledge is power. Knowledge is like knowledge is like uh, potential energy. Right. Kinetic energy is what makes shit happen. You know what I'm saying? Like that's because like all of this shit that's happening right now is a lot of knowledge circulating. A lot of motherfuckers know about what's going on if the government is corrupt and it's connected to that. So like damn Obama, I think Obama probably was a good dude. Maybe I would like to pick him, nigga. You know what I'm saying? But he was a politician puppet, just like hey, a hot Tim. Go ahead. Yo. I got a uh, I got a character written out for you. <laughs> you like the you like the Alan Quatermain of all the uh, all the all the Black Lives the who? that's been taken. All the Black Lives, uh huh. Right, like all the young cats, not just in the hood, but the ones who who uh who passed away on the inside. Because I had this idea when I wanted to acquire the old juvenile courthouse, if they didn't let me have it, it made me feel some kind of way because of the 100,000 souls that never left that spot, right. that never left out there the same, that never left out there the same. You understand? So for 100,000 souls and for you to have that, that power, opposed to like in, in, uh, in Defenders of the Earth, when they had Phantom, what did Phantom call on? He called on like strength of the bear or the strength of ten tigers. And then you see like the spirit ten tigers jump into him, right? Right. Well, just imagine if your power was the fact that your extra eyes and ears and your extra strength is a hundred thousand souls on the other side that only you can see, like that kid on the sixth sense. So when you come when you come you walking with an army. They can feel it. Listen. But they can't put their eyes on it. See, and that's the piece, family. That's why I get up and I pour those libations. You understand what I'm saying? Because the, the point is, we do have access to that. You know what I'm saying? We have forgot our ancestral wisdom, right? You know what I'm saying? Because it's cool to have the numbers and shit, but we also got to plug into the magic of our people, man. We did some incredible shit. Incredible. We just have to figure out how to tell the tale. So that our kids be like, I'm going to do that shit. Matter of fact, I'm going to be on that shit. It's, unif it's the unification and the dollars and the, all of that and just schemes and then telling the story. I mean, like the, the deception, man, like it's, it's, it's going to happen like from some perspective, man. Either you're part of the deception or you're being deceived. Dude, that's just the nature of shit, man. Because I was thinking that I was kind of going in this direction. I know I was talking in a lot of different places, but no like the, the North Korea shit, it occurred to me today that... He just launched off all of these different rockets and, and, and had the nuclear device that they tested since Trump been in office. You know, and, it's, and Trump is the type of motherfucker to respond the type of way that he's responding, which is a real aggressive, like, you know, type of, type of posture. It occurred to me that they just got these resources to do that shit. What's the likelihood that American interests funded North Korea's progression to where they at right now? They could did that shit without North Korea even realizing it. Oh, man. Hey. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Oh, man. Listen, dog. I mean, and that's called... Uh, see, some of y'all playing chess, right? I play Mancala. 
that shit is definitely possible, family, because think about this shit, right? So I want you to listen to the rhetoric and the way that Donald Trump is talking. Donald Trump is talking about America like America is God. You know what I'm saying? Oh, we will, you know, if any attacks happen to us or our allies, we will respond with death and destruction upon you. Motherfucker, you know, you know what I'm saying? I mean, let's, I mean, listen, I'm going to tell y'all right now, family, listen, if I was in North Korea, if I was, if, if I was in that situation, I was doing shit like this, what North Korea is banking on, I'm, I'm playing man color, what North Korea is banking on is if they do some shit, China and Russia is going to be sitting on the sidelines. They're not going, they're not going, they're not going to get involved in that shit. And they're gonna wait for the ideal time to get involved, and they're gonna get on. They're gonna get involved on the side that best fit their interests, and the best interest for China and Russia right now is for America to fall off, family. Y'all don't realize that shit. What would happen to America's reputation if we attacked North Korea and ended up in a war with them for another seven years? We ain't finished the war with Afghanistan. We ain't finished be rebuilding the Iraq. You know what I'm saying? That's two failures. Y'all, they're not. They're not telling you like that. And it's kind of consistent with what, what, the, what the posture is in the United States because the posture, like, okay, so if 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 the United States was to attack North Korea with a preemptive strike, then that's basically taking the veil off. That's basically saying we're the we're the bad guy. Fuck y'all, we're the bad guy, and we think we're strong enough as the bad guy to beat all of you motherfuckers, right? And that's how they acting here, right? That's how they treating us, and we fucking citizens. They doing that shit to white people. You ain't safe in America. Like, police will fuck you up. I don't know what your color is. If you black, you better really watch out. But, hey, you ain't safe out here if you white. You know what I mean? And then that brings up what I just said about the my, my maybe pinky in the brain theories on some North Korea bomb funding shit. This Antifa shit. That's not, I mean, that's not far. That's not far stretch. Antifa went from people that was fighting against the Nazis to now Antifa is homegrown terrorists, right? So these motherfuckers is basically going to sh places where it's something happening, trying to start riots. And that definitely don't work out for black people, and that don't work out for nobody, because all that's doing is making up, that's justifying more police aggressiveness, you know what I'm saying? Word, but yo, family, this is Brother Tim. Yo, I got my brother, I want to send shouts out to my brother, uh, Shaka, for joining me. We open with his song. Um, he also opened us up with a with a marvelous story. I want to send shouts out to my brother Quasi Lowe for joining the conversation, coming out and joining us. You know what I'm saying? This I kind of missed this shit, so I had to come back. Y'all know I shouldn't be smoking, but hey, you know I got rid of the other tobacco, so hey, you know I'm doing the hookah it brings people around. I want to send shouts out to all those that stopped in the timeline for a minute. Shouts out to uh, um, Lady J. Shouts out to Brother Nehemiah. Shouts out to Brother Juan. Shouts out to Brother Duvall. Shouts out to Sister Nicole Pittman. Let me see who else. Uh, shouts out to my sister Regina Tolliver. Um, shouts out to uh, Janae Jackson. Shouts out to Kevin Sanchez. Shouts out to Tiffany Smith. Hey, I want to talk with you about the glass because, you know, I, if I need to put a down payment, I want something made by your hands for the morning, morning toast. And shouts out to my blood brother, Ernie Gardner. I got a lot of brothers, but this is, this, me, we share blood. We share DNA. Shouts out to Ernie Gardner. Um, you know what I'm saying? I want to thank all of y'all for tuning in to Giami Journey and know that I'm going to be up in the morning doing a toast. I might be a little bit late. You know what I'm saying? But I need to remind y'all, you are now listening to Giami Journey Radio. <laughs> This is Folk Tales for Grown Folks. We've been joined by Brother Shaka and, and, and the international traveler, Brother um, 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 brother Quasi, um, Quasi Low. Um, and this is a Heart of a Simba production. Well, you know, my only goal is to strive to blow up your old paradigms. Do you, do you hear that? Is it supposed to sound like this? M Mr. Deity, I think it sounds great.
Mr. Deity. 